In the world of music and business, few names shine as brightly as Jay-Z. From his humble beginnings in Brooklyn to his rise as a global icon, Jay-Z has not only revolutionized hip-hop, but has also made groundbreaking moves in the business world. Today we explore five of Jay-Z's most brilliant business moves that have solidified his legacy as a mogul. Jay-Z's journey from the streets of Brooklyn to the pinnacle of success is a testament to his unparalleled work ethic and entrepreneurial spirit. As of this year, Jay is estimated to be worth $2.5 billion. And let's start where it all started with Rockefeller Records. In 1996, Jay-Z along with Damon Dash and Kareem Burke, aka Biggs, founded Rockefeller Records. This was actually a result of Jay-Z being turned down by almost all the major record labels. Nobody thought that he was good enough. We talked about this in more detail in our video that looked into the rise and fall of Damon Dash. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend you do that after this video. I'll leave a link below. Rockefeller Records went well beyond being the launching pad for Jay-Z. It became a major player in hip hop. Rockefeller became a powerhouse in the music industry, launching the careers of artists like Kanye West, Cameron, and Beanie Siegel. Under Jay-Z's leadership, Rockefeller Records became synonymous with innovation and authenticity, laying the foundation for Jay-Z's future business ventures. In 1997, the founders of Rockefeller Records sold half of the business to Death Jam for a reported $1.5 million. Seven years later, Death Jam ended up buying the rest of the record company for $10 million. And number two, starting the fashion brand Rockaware. Jay-Z's influence extends far beyond music, and nowhere is this more evident than in the world of fashion. In 1999, Jay-Z co-founded Rockaware, a clothing brand that quickly became a staple in urban fashion. Rockaware captured the imagination of a generation and solidified Jay-Z's status as a cultural icon. At its height, Rockaware was bringing in an estimated 400 million in sales a year. In 2007, Jay sold the rights to Rockaware to the Iconics brand group for an estimated $204 million. And then no one wore it ever again. Rest in peace, Rockaware. A lot of celebrities start some type of fashion brand or product line, but most of them cannot claim the type of success Jay-Z had. Now you can see how his journey to becoming a billionaire is starting to shape up. And number three, getting into Douce Cognac. Jay-Z's investment in Douce Cognac represents one of his most strategic business moves, demonstrating his keen eye for lucrative opportunities beyond the realm of music and entertainment. In 2012, Jay-Z announced a partnership with Bacardi, a global leader in spirits, to launch Douce Cognac. This collaboration was significant not only because it marked Jay-Z's entry into the spirits industry, but also because it showcased his ability to leverage his personal brand and cultural influence to drive success in new ventures. Douce Cognac was positioned as a premium brand, targeting a sophisticated and discerning consumer base. Jay-Z played a hands-on role in the development of the brand from its packaging and branding to its marketing strategy. By aligning himself with a respectable brand like Bacardi and leveraging his own influence, Jay-Z helped propel Douce to success in a competitive market. In 2023, Jay sold his share of the company to Bacardi. The only problem was they offered him $500 million when he estimated his share would be worth $1.5 billion. After a lot of legal back and forth, the two parties settled on $750 million. If Jay hadn't been a billionaire already at this point, this sure would have pushed him over to the exclusive billionaires club. At number four, trying to disrupt the music industry with Tidal in 2015. Jay-Z made waves in the music industry with the launch of Tidal, a subscription-based streaming service owned by artists. Tidal aimed to disrupt the status quo and empower artists to take control of their music. The details of the Tidal story are very interesting because it's pretty much a story of Jay-Z flipping a company. Jay-Z initially bought Tidal, which was then called Espirio, in 2015 for $56 million. By 2020, Tidal had 2.1 million paying subscribers, which is a tiny number compared to Spotify's 138 million or Apple's 60 million subscribers. The company suffered financial losses in multiple quarters and even needed a $50 million loan from Jay-Z to keep operating. Despite all these challenges, Jay-Z was able to sell 86% of Tidal to Jack Dorsey, head of Block Inc. and former Twitter CEO, for $237 million. 
dollars. Many saw this move by Jack Dorsey as a horrible business move and even suggested he only did it because of his close relationship with Jay-Z. One NYU business professor even called the purchase a $300 million bar tab to hang out with Jay-Z. Either way, Jay walked away from this business venture with a good chunk of change. Remember, it pays to have relationships and don't burn bridges because somebody might come around with $237 million to bail you out of a bad situation. And in number five, we have shaping the future of entertainment with Rock Nation. In 2008, Jay-Z founded Rock Nation in partnership with Live Nation, a full service entertainment company that represents some of the biggest names in music, sports, and culture. From Rihanna to Kevin Durant, Rock Nation has become a powerhouse in talent management, branding, and live events. With Rock Nation, Jay-Z has not only elevated the careers of artists and athletes, but has also expanded his influence into new realms of entertainment and business. Rock Nation is responsible for the Super Bowl halftime show, Who Saw Usher, and what do you think of Alicia Keys? Leave a comment below. The Made in America Music Festival, and even has a publishing deal with Random House. According to Forbes, Jay-Z's stake in the company was estimated to be worth $140 million back in 2021, and I can only assume it has grown since then. There is a lot to be learned from Jay-Z's journey from a drug dealer that was once rejected by all the record companies, and then going on to become a hip hop legend and eventually a freaking billionaire. One of the lessons is betting on yourself and diversify, which has become a constant theme in our videos. And sometimes you will just need to make moves in silence. Again, if you haven't watched our video on Dame Dash Rise and Fall, and then maybe rise again, watch that next up here. That's it for this video. We'll see you next time for more Money Talk.